Hey everyone, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. Today, we're going to look at something else that I haven't talked about for a while. Pitch Perfect. Now, if you recall from my blog of Pitch Perfect 2 back in November of 2015, this franchise, despite sometimes mature, is still very good with great songs, outstanding choreography, and a fantastic cast of a cappella singers. However, when 2017 was about to start last year, I was hyped for a new sequel. But when the movie was being advertised via trailers, I was shocked when I found out that it was going to be the Bella's farewell movie. But... Does this movie deserve to go out with a bang? Let's find out. Released on December 22nd, 2017, the movie is Pitch Perfect 3. Now let's get started. After the highs of winning the world championships, the Bellows find themselves split apart and discovering that there aren't any job prospects for making music with your mouth. But, when they get the chance to reunite for an overseas USO tour, this group of awesome nerds will come together to make some music and some questionable decisions one last time. So, what do I think of this movie? Well, I deeply applaud this film. Yes, I liked it. Though... It's not as good as the previous two, but let me explain in my Mustang notes. Director, star, and producer of the second movie, Elizabeth Banks acknowledged the possibility of a third film during promotion of Pitch Herd 2 when she said that it would be disingenuous to say that no one was talking about the possibility of a Pitch Herd 3. On June 10th, 2015, a third film was officially confirmed, and Kay Cannon was set to return to write the script. Paul Brooks, again, produced for Gold Circle Films, along with Max Handelman and Banks for Brownstone Productions. On October 27, 2015, Banks was officially announced to return as director for the film, though she exited in the capacity on June 3rd, 2016. On September 1st, 2016, Trish Sai was confirmed to direct the movie. Cannon wrote the script with later drafts by Mike White and Dana Fox. White would eventually receive screenwriting credits alongside Cannon. Principal photography on the film began on June 5th, 2017, and took place in Atlanta, Georgia, and Cadiz, Spain. Filming wrapped up on April 3rd, 2017. Now, there are some things I should mention. For example, the Troublemaker group, led by Becca's former boyfriend, Jesse, is absent in this movie, due to the long-distance relationship thing. Now, I know this is none of my business, but this does sound pretty similar to why my sister broke up with her boyfriend, Ian. Also, like the last two films, there is some adult language and crude humor in this. Plus, there are a few antics in this movie that are really over the top. Some that involve fires, bees, and explosions. On the positive side, the setting in Spain looks very beautiful, and I like the hotel where the Bellas stay at during their visit. Also, the other countries like Italy and France are great too. Lastly, some of my favorite songs featured in this movie are Toxic, The Riff Off Medley, Cheap Thrills, Cake by the Ocean, 
X's and O's, and of course, Freedom 90. Plus, I really like the different outfits that the Bellas wear when they sing, and their choreography is really spot on. And now, let's move on to the cast. The former leader of the Bellas, Becca Mitchell, is again played by Anna Kendrick, who got to be in Paranorman, Into the Woods, Trolls, and the infamous Twilight Saga. And next year, she'll be in Disney's newest Christmas movie, Noel. Becca worked as a producer but, thankfully, she quit due to creative differences before joining the tour. She has been sharing an apartment in New York City with her best friends Chloe and Fat Amy for the last three years. To me, Becca is still a great character in the Pitch Perfect trilogy. She's rebellious, free-spirited, passionate, and loyal to her Bella friends, whom she considers as her family. Next is Patricia Hobart, aka Fat Amy, played by Rebel Wilson, whom I remember from How to Be Single. Amy is a comedic alumna of the Barton Bellas from Australia. She held a one-woman show called Fat Amy Winehouse, before joining the tour. In this movie, Amy seems to get a lot of development due to her mixed relationship with her father. More on him later. Still, I think Amy is a really outrageous singer, and she's really funny and sarcastic at times. My favorite scene that Amy is in is when she beats up her father's guards and sets up explosions on the yacht. Next we have Chloe Beale, played by Brittany Snow, who got to be in John Tucker Must Die, Prom Night from 2008, Hairspray from 2007, and of course, Kingdom Hearts 2. Chloe is the former co-leader who longs for glory days with the Bellas. She applied to attend a vet school before joining the tour. I really like her too. Not just due to Britney Snow's acting, but I think that she's really nice. And of course, she's supportive to Becca and the other Bellas. Next up is Aubrey Posen, played by Anna Camp, whom Disney fans might remember as Princess Ivy, from Sophia the First, The Curse of Princess Ivy, and its sequel episode, Ivy's True Colors. Aubrey was the former leader before Becca, who worked at the Lodge of the Fallen Leaves. Through her father, the Bellas were invited to the USO tour. I really like that Aubrey gets more scenes in this movie than in the second film. And... I think Aubrey has improved as a character, though she can still be stubborn at times. Also joining the Bellas is the current leader, Emily Junk, played by Haley Steinfield, who got to be in When Marnie Was Here. Emily is a senior student at Barnum University who joins her former seniors for the tour since one of the members, Stacy, can't make it due to her pregnancy. Since the last film, Emily has become one of my favorite characters in the Pitch Perfect films. And I think she makes a great bell leader and a great songwriter. Plus, I think she's very pretty. We also have the commentators, John and Gail, played by John Michael Higgins and director Elizabeth Banks. Throughout this movie, 
they plan to make an insulting documentary about the Bellas, which I think makes them stalkers. Now here's we come to the new characters, starting with the new villain, Fergus Hobart, Fat Amy's estranged criminal father, played by John Lithgow, who got to be in the original Footloose movie, Santa Claus the Movie, Rugrats in Paris, Shrek, and Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Fergus was an unexpected villain due to the fact that when we first see him, he seems very caring when singing to his little daughter. But throughout this movie, he tries to beg for Amy to come back into his life. Also, after he confesses that he is trying to acquire an offshore account that Amy's mother set up, which contains $180 million, Amy shuts him down again. Later on, he gets his revenge by kidnapping the Bellas and taking them to his yacht. Next we come to Chicago Walp, played by Matt Lanter who got to be in Star Wars The Clone Wars and the Tinkerbell movie The Secret of the Wings. Chicago is a U.S. soldier who guides the Bellas during their USO tour. And, of course, he becomes Chloe's love interest. I think this guy makes a great supervisor and a great bodyguard, so I salute him. We also have Evermoist, a band whose members are Calamity, Serenity, Charity, and Veracity, played by Ruby Rose, Andy Allo, uh, Vanzella Joy Williams, and Hannah Fairlight. In my opinion, this band isn't like the sound machine from the last film, but they're still very competitive, and they can be rude at times. Plus, unlike most a cappella groups, they use instruments to accompany their singing. We also have DJ Khaled's music producer, Theo, played by Guy Burnett, who immediately takes a liking to Becca and helps her make a music mix for Khaled. And last but not least, we have Aubrey's father, played by Michael Rose, whom without, the Bellas wouldn't be able to go for the USO tour. Overall, for being the Barton Bellas' last movie, Pitch Perfect 3 came out with a bang. Despite a few flaws like the story, a bit of crude humor, and a few characters not being as likable as they were previously, as well as a few characters being absent here, I still enjoy this movie for how it is. The different settings are great, the songs featured in the movie are fun to listen to, and I still enjoy several of the Bellas like Becca, Emily, Amy, and Aubrey. The new characters like Chicago and Theo are decent, while Fergus was an unexpected villain. Plus, the rival band, Evermoist, despite being rude, were pretty impressive. Also, even if you think this movie isn't as good as the previous two, you should still check this movie out if you like good music or a cappella. Also, if the cast and crew of the Pitch Perfect Trilogy are out there watching this blog, I would like to say thank you for everything you did with these movies. I give this movie an 80% out of 100. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Be sure to join me again next time. Mustang Power.